Um, hello, my name is Teresa Ricardi. I'm director of Museo Sigori uh, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And uh, I am very thankful for this invitation. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the presentation is about. Um, this is um, the title of it. It's Crisis and the Performative Condition, Graphic Image, Scenarios and Activism in Modern and Contemporary Argentine Artistic Collective Practices. Um, I decided to read a little bit the abstract so we have a whole idea of what the um, this presentation is about. And then I'm going to focus on each part of this um, abstract and try to develop a little bit more um, some of the ideas I've been working with. Um, so this essay comparatively links the strategies of collective artistic practices and performative responses to the crisis of the 1930s when the first military coup took place in Argentina, the first in a series of coups that continued throughout the century and the insurrectional crisis on the one hand, uh, and then the insurrectional, I'm going to try to connect it with, this, with some of the problems uh, and elements that uh, were addressed by artists in 2001 with the uh, economic collapse that we had in Argentina at the time, which although did not unleash a coup, brutally weakened the democratic representative conception, placing five presidents in a week due to a very exclusive and unequal economic model adapted for 10 years. We will draw a series of parallelisms in the process of graphic collectivization and modes of articulation of image scenarios. This, this is a concept I will try to develop, thinking on the one hand scenarios that are much more related to specific theatrical kind of conception, uh, and then also scenarios of political scenarios, no? political activists uh, and and modes of, of creating in this new unstable uh, context. And I would like to address that although very diverse in this inaugural groups of modern artists, some group strategies, I would say, persist to date and respond this, to respond this new and same and equal contexts. So this is also uh, 2001 would be the scenario and the framework when Duplus Collective, which I formed as an, uh, in a, it was a sort of emerging organization at the time, was a project, um, it's a collective, and it was a project located in a very subordinate genealogy of thought practices that like other network groups establish work dynamics. <laughs> that connected diverse and dispersed subjectivities. This was the first and main idea that I will also refer to why we, we, we produced this idea and with whom we will discuss some of these ideas. And without pretending settling debates, Duplus uh, provided as well tools to understand the difficulties that shape curatorial practice inside and outside the institution as well as rethinking from the power of subject, subjectivity, how this works inside and outside art in moments of inequality and precarious labor. So um, after that, um, I would like to, as, a, as to end up a little bit um, this, this thing, is how we can connect not only this history between modern and contemporary, but how since, um, in this moment, I think this moment of uncertainty, um, as the one that the global pandemic locked us, lock us down and poses us today, and in Argentina it has been recurrently um, referred as a crisis, very similar to the one in the 30s. I find, in my context, I find myself running a city museum that houses uh, an inaugural collection uh, that belongs to the Artistas del Pueblo, which I will, I will refer to and are very much connected to this period of the 30s and, uh, and to the Argentina of that time and, and the Argentina of the Depression. Um, and study, so I will try to connect this new, new rereading of this collection, so studying the transformative practices that at the time promoted art on the left in Argentina, but in which way this poses new questions uh, today. 
So I believe that these artists that help pueblo are today represented by other collectives, not only collectives that were representative, let's say, during the the eighties or the um, or even though in the in two thousand one, two thousand three, two thousand four, but also to new um, uh, new collectives that are much more represented. Uh, in the feminist collective, in a non-binary thinking, that um, feminist and queer activisms that have been also appropriating in or a, uh, in a very interesting agency conceptions that are related to the graphic performative expressions, and trying to articulate them in in sort of um, microviral networks and new organization strategies, not only locally but regionally. So I think that. Um, I, I, we are going, uh, I'm going to try to describe a little bit this Artistas del Pueblo and also the context in between 20s and 30s um, that are mainly two important groups. So I will start showing some of these images that belong to Artistas del Pueblo. The context in Argentina was um, briefly a context of uh, a first of um, in the thirties was a first military coup, but there was a the, the conditions between the twenties were a little bit better in between the years to twenty one twenty two up to the twenty five six but in between seventeen and nineteen there were a lot of strikes uh, due to the collapse after the first world war and uh, the economic collapse uh, crisis, there was a sort of important crisis already there, especially in the rural areas. And so there were a lot of strikes. And there, in 1919, there is a semana called Semana Tragica, which really uh, was, a, was, a, was, was a very difficult moment where the, there was a repression to anarchists and socialist groups uh, in a factory that was called the Vasena factory. So um, that is a very difficult moment. There's a lot of activism in the working classes. Uh, so in this context is where Artistas del Pueblo appear. Uh, so uh, there are two other, there are like two groups, mainly two groups of the avant-garde um, uh, movements in Argentina that are this, on the one hand, Grupo Boedo, on, on the other hand, Grupo Florida. They are much more related to national literature and the reinvention of literature, Argentinian liter literature. Um, I would like to say that these artistas del pueblo uh, eh, that I consider uh, here, uh, and they collaborated with this group, Boedo, and they also, um, this is the name, Boedo is related to a name of, 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 of a neighborhood. Um, and this group enriched the language and visual culture with uh, this also vernacular approach to Lumfardo, national literature, and encompassed an extensive production ranging from graphic images, craft, applied arts, and, and fine arts as well. What I would like to show is also, uh, we were saying that they depicted this image scenarios, that we have scenarios mainly related to um, uh, the street, uh, they, 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 they represented many of the actors at that time in a very realistic way, let's say. Um, so we have uh, the Atorrantes, images of the Atorrantes that Bella did at, in the 1920s. Then we have some images of the series of engraving on lithographs by Facio Abecar called Malas, Mala Vida. So they are all these um, different uh, ways of depicting uh, the society at the time and the working class uh, in, in a very active way. I would like also to state um, that at this point, they rather prefer, and I'm quoting Patrick Frank, because they did not see themselves as typical artists who create for the consumption of the upper classes and, the for, and the, for the connoisseurs, no? They prefer to show their works in locations that the working class frequented. Their most common exhibition venues were union halls, community centers, socialist party libraries, and the thriving working class culture founded really allies in these members of the Artistas del Pueblo. Other cultural workers closely allied to the studio were the leftist author of Poedo School, as I was saying, a group of social realists who wrote novel plays, poems, and stories that dealt sympathetically with many aspects of the life of the lower classes.
They did many, these artists frequently made illustrations for the Boedo, for Boedo fictions and indeed collaborated between two groups that will be central focus of this book now. Among them, um, we, we can say that at that time we have these artists, but they are also collaborating with other groups like the theater groups that were appearing at that time, independent groups. Uh, and so we have some of the ideas uh, that they developed together with, with Schunke, with um, Leonidas Barleta, and some other very important writers in Argentina that had uh, a sort of connection with the avant-garde theater and the independent theater. So uh, it's that there, the, in this case, it's very interesting because when they collaborated with them, the, the, the kind of works that they did were very diverse from their own solutions that they had for their own practice. And, and although they did it collectively, they were very futuristic at that time. So I think that this is a very, this is interesting as well to, to, to see the, the diversity in the creative processes. In this case, most of them are gouaches. They are not engravings. Uh, they are, so the scenarios and these images are really settings for these decorations for the independent theater. But I am gonna read something about this which they had a manifesto from 1927. One is to employ a group of writers, decorators, and actors who aspire to formation of a new theater and who have a greater interest in art than in commerce. Two, to periodically stage productions and seasons when resources permit with works, actors, and montage which are aligned with the goals of the free theater, including foreign works typical of reforming movements. C, to immediately begin a campaign of agitation in all public spheres to spread the principles and goals of the free theater. And, and last, to declare an official organ of this institution, Magazine Claridad, until such a time as as a particular one can be created. This was signed by Barleta, Castel Nuevo, Facio de Becker, Octavio Palazzolo, Ugasio, Abraham Vigo, and Alvaro Junque. So I think that this describes a little bit how this connection was attempted and how they wanted to work um, uh, and how, which were their ideas. No? So we have some images of En Nombre del... En Nombre de the Cristo that is one that we have in the collection of the museum, which has this very expressionistic also uh, images. Uh, the satire was also a kind of way they used to work, la critica, the critic, the social critic. Um, and, and we have some other images here. Some of them are really experimental and very futuristic, uh, which I am showing in this case and belong to our collection. These uh, artists, there were artists that also collaborated there who were also interested in theater, like Jules Solar. And Jules Solar um, and was, had also happened to be that he was also in Munich uh, in between 1921 and 1923. And I think it's a very interesting figure also to relate to this kind of new conceptions uh, about um, the, the activism, in his case, about a pan-activism, a pan-American kind of idea of universal languages, but at the same time very vernacular, like in, in the inventions that he created in neo Criollo, and also the visions he had um, about uh, the different scenarios the Ameri the, the, that were Americanos in this case, Mesoamericanos, and, and that were produced during the 20s at the time. So... Um, also, among these artists that participated, Martin Fierro, Jules Solar, um, Peter Uti, and, and a female artist, Nora Borges, the sister of Jorge Luis Borges, that has recently been revised. And she also has these scenarios of patios, let's say, and she's an engraver as well in the beginning of the, her work. Um, and I think that this is, uh, is a tradition that I believe that most of these artists uh, try to explore. And, and it was... Uh, inaugural in Argentina, let's say. Here I am exhibiting, for example, a magazine Claridad from Argentina with a portrait of Maria Tei. And then on the other side, we have an exhibition where we are, um, that, that we, we, an exhibition and marvelous exhibition organized by Beverly Adams and Natalia Maclouf that is called Red de Vanguardia, Amauta and America Latina from 1926 to 1930, where there are all these narratives of modernist, uh, um, avant-garde movements 
but she's like giving another kind of turn and they are giving another kind of turn to it and trying to revise these other collectives that had not been revisited. Uh, just to close this idea, so we have these actors, scenarios and images that depict a little bit the 20s and 30s, but I would go, like to go now to 2001 and try to map a little bit what was our collective about. So we have this image there that is called Que se vayan todos, which was a very iconic image there. Of course, after five residents in one week, it was very unstable. So we would, it was like a, a claim for, from the audience to just uh, leave the place. No? It, it was like a sort of, um, uh, we had a, this assembly, uh, popular assemblies and places where we all gathered and discussed very much uh, not only the economy, but the political power at the time. So Duplus uh, started to, which we were a collective of four people uh, in the beginnings. Um, it was Santiago Garcia Rambulu, Valeria Gonzalez, Santiago Garcia Navarro, and me, and, and I. Uh, and so we, at the beginning, Duplus, between 1999 and 2002, it was a, a, a run artist space, uh, by Lucio Dor and Santiago Garcia Ramburu. And so when we started in 2001, there was a sort of idea of reframing it into a collective. Uh, it was very difficult to maintain the, the space uh, and the studio. So Santiago and Lucio decided to work and collaborate with us. At that time, they had collaborated as well with Trama, which was another initiative uh, of artists, but they were trying to remap artists that were out, uh, whose practices were autogestionadas, self-managed. Um, and so I think that uh, these alliances, because part of the members of the group of Trama and Duplus uh, work together, like for example, Pablo Sicarello, an artist, a very interesting artist, and, and, and Marina de Caro, Claudia Fontes, they were all artists that were uh, trying to map what was going on, not only in Buenos Aires, but federally through this crisis. So they were very transformative. They were creating networks that were very horizontal. So there were a lot of groups of artists that were also uh, related to these new groups that were getting together. On the other hand, 2001 became a terrible crisis that created uh, other networks that were political networks uh, and groups, but that they would go also in between uh, these new practices. Uh, the, 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 the great amount of, of movements of people who were unemployed and created massive groups like the MTD that, that was called El Movimiento de Trabajadores Desocupados. There were a lot of factories that were left without... Um, uh, the people that were working in the factories were earning every time more and less and less. So everybody was starting to move and, and, and new factory movements uh, started to appear, like el movimiento de trabajadores de fábricas recuperadas. So all of these uh, groups, that uh, the piqueteros movements, there were many social political movements that were claiming the unemployment and the low wages and, and the crisis that we're going through. So this mobilized a lot of people in, 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 in the country. So we, uh, a lot of different groups started to appear in between there from 2002 to 2007, TPS workshops started to appear um, in these different scenarios. TPS originally was uh, a, Many artists collaborated there. Uh, at the beginnings, Diego Posadas, Mariela Scafati, Magdalena Chitric, Karina Granieri, Carolina Katz. Well, many, really many. It was really big. And so TPS started to create this, again, started to use these uh, this, this chablones to create new images that were um, um, shared among this um uh, moving activities and, and, and mobilizations um, and they would create together in each case where they went an image that would be produced among the workers and them.
So we have here a sort of big map specifically for the week that happened with the Brookman factory that was a textile factory and most of them were women who work in this factory and and so they created a, a week of a uh, semana that was called Arte Confección and this gathered a lot of groups, activists, intellectuals and, and it was a very interesting way. They called this action maquinazo and so you have here some of the elaborations and designs that they did at the time. Also, there was uh, since 19 and 20 of December, uh, we had a, a very an insurrectional crisis that repressed many people. And it was the first time that was the Argentinians um, rebelled against this um, this crisis. So after every year, they commemorated uh, the TPS. Uh, this this repression uh, of the to give memory to these conditions of, of living and so you have this image of manifiesta that is, that is a year after the repression of um, and it's also a graphic performative expression. No? On the left we have other examples of how in 2001 Magdalena Schintrich that was part of a member created a museum, an imaginary museum in the flat. I would like also to give a, a small uh, detail about what we understood uh, or what were the activities um, we we want to share as Duplus. Um, so in 2003 we had this encounter of different projects of independent um, so, or independent self-management projects, artist-run spaces in initiatives in America Latina and Caribe that took place in Fundación Proa and with Trama. Uh, it was a, the idea was to collaborate in a network of independent projects around America Latina and share a little bit of this a practice of workshops and, and actions and dialogues with the public and thinking, uh, production knowledge thinking. Um, then there was this uh, other workshop we did with artistic practice and social practice in Argentina at the time. Um, and it was uh, among the people who participated at that time were Situa Colectivo Situaciones, Duplus, uh, the team of Archivo Oral with Paula Zambelli, Gabriela Piñero y Germina Fresoli, very visual artist, uh, uh, like Magdalena Chitric, Tulio Sastizabal, Eduardo Molinari, Carina Granieri, Geraldine Lanteri, Pes, also some musicians um, like Nicolás Barchowski and Rodrigo Bender, they also participated, and some others as well, part of the team of Duplos, the prior team. Um, then other things we really wanted to work with was the intervention on public um, libraries. Uh, so there was this idea at one point that actually didn't really happen at the time, but it was the idea to participate with, with the FLA. At that point, I had a connection which was uh, working at the Federación Libertaria Argentina. But I think that the best example that that was taken into that direction not, was not from us, it was from Magdalena Chitric. So then we had uh, this project uh, to think about some very specific aspect that we call curaduría situacional. And the proposal uh, ex was to explicit and debate through a curatorial project uh, the limitations of the model based in the exhibitionary space, um, um, the, 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 the complex of the, the exhibitionary um, display. And basically what we were talking about was the limitation that emerged in, in the, this idea of non, the impossibility of translating the context that gives sense to every aesthetic practice. So in the case of Duplus, the exhibition was thought like um, exhibitions that propose practice and, imagines, and images that were exclusively represented by documentary sport or of is a sort of residue or material aspect of what happened. So the idea is that these images were um, uh, 
considered for a discussion space uh, about the differences and practice in each context and the relationship to define them as historically changing and how this reframes them uh, because it becomes situational and all the programs and contents of an artwork and independent artwork uh, in an art institution uh, varies a lot. So there is a performative as well condition in this situational curatorial aspect that develops them. So this is what I wanted to explain a little bit more of the concept of curaduría situacional. We were thinking, I think that revising this, we were thinking a little bit more about uh, the institution and how this, we could do something at that point, at least for me, that was part of the reflection. But at that point, I was not sure. We were kind of um, also not very happy about the curatorial aspects that we saw in the institutions. And so we, we needed to work on different ideas of curatorial uh, projects. So, so my work basically after that, after those years, was much more a collaboration, specifically with one of the groups that... Um, we started to discuss and, and, and we tried to, to elaborate as well um, this thinking and try to think that in other contexts. And so uh, I collaborated with Capacete for a while and we also created uh, different groups uh, of... Um, we, we worked together also in a second encounter that took place in Valparaíso uh, with also discussing, there was a sort of, um, in this case, the scenario was um, when we were invited there, we decided to uh, talk with the residents of Valparaíso and debate the projects articulated around the port that was promoted at that time with a sort of gentrification of the port of Valparaíso. So a list of small business were closed. Uh, we, we, we projected a sort of a list of small business that were closing by the this entrepreneurship in the project and and we projected this online in in in, in the street in a very central place of Valparaíso so we have these images that we did in 2005 but we parallel with these other projects that were for example um, I collaborated with the with the exhibition of Capacete in Petzl Gallery in New York um, so it was really diverse, the work. And at the same time, we also, um, in Argentina, we started to work a bit, uh, I started to work together with other curators and one artist, um, that is Diego Melero, to map a little bit the genealogy of, of, of non-work. And so I was thinking about today, as I said before, that Artistas del Pueblo need to be revised from uh, another perspective maybe a feminist Duplusian work framework, as I would say. Um, and so thinking of a distance of almost 100 years and from the emergence of Facio's epigraphic production, one of the members of Artista del Pueblo, I invited uh, Gabriela Golder to reopen. Um, uh, to Gabriela Golder, which is an artist that comes from the video, um, from video... Uh, a video artist uh, and Golder is also sister of Carolina Golder who she is part of the collective GAC, Grupo de Arte Callejero which it brings up to uh, this idea of how to think about the working class, the precarious labor and many other con conditions that are very actual today so Golder decided to reopen in a way this continuous line of libertarian thought around the lithography that we have in the collection called Tu Historia Compañero so she creates uh, uh, um, that from this production, she draws a series of parallels about the images of labor, theater, and revolutionary forms of social transformation between past and present. And she recreates the prints from the past from the Facio series as live pictures with the participation of actors and actresses from community theater groups and factory works, workers recovered in Buenos Aires today. So she's bringing up some of the tradition of the factory that are the, the Fabricas Recuperadas, Recover Factories, the groups, the theater community groups that I think that I find also in Ardita del Pueblo and her work as an activist as well. She has a lot of reflection in her work about labor. No? Um, other groups that I think 
it should be revised is, um, for example, activist groups of Marie Cafati. I, I think that this installation that she did last year in Extraterrestre in 2019 was very interesting. There are like these puppets that are designed um, for, um, that are subjectivities that are related to his friends, but at the same time to the, the diversity of the images and uh, non-binary idea of how to frame subjectivities. Um, uh, then there is, there was Mariela Escafati also, who was part, uh, is a visual artist and a professor of visual arts. She maintains construct production since the 90s and coordinates artisan screen printing workshops in different cultural spaces. And in 2002, together with Magdalena Chitrica and Posadas and Karina Granieri, they created the TPS. And since 2007, she coordinates these queer screen printing meetings. And in 2010, together with Lola Aranisha, she created the Artisan Electronic Radio and she carried out her teaching works in Belleza y Felicidad and many other things, also in, in, in emergency areas and vulnerable barrios uh, like um, Villa Fiorito. She, she has been working really hard and she has a very important graphic uh, tradition, but she always says that her work is much more related to painting. So I think that this is a performative idea of painting as well. Uh, I'm going to show us a few images of Serira Fistas Queer. Uh, so we have here um, some of these images. I see here uh, they work with chablotecas, so with this... And, and so they also printed in different places, like in the street, fair, school, assemblies, plazas, or in the marches. Um, another kind of queer activism is Adminoliti. So we have some examples. And this is a uh, last example that we have is uh, an exhibition. It took place in Argentina, in Buenos Aires at Sibori. It was called Transrealismo. So we had like many activities related also to graphic. In this case, Marcelo Bombo, that is bringing up a, a sort of engraver, women engraver, Mele Bruniar, together with the movements of Nuna Menos in 2015. And so he's combinating this kind of tradition, women traditions, uh, together with Mariette Levis, that was uh, an important artist of the collection of Sibori, that also had incredible engravings and lithographs. So, um, well, this is basically what I would like to show. And I'm sorry if we had a little bit more of time. Um, but maybe this can explain a little bit what we're doing. Thank you.